So I'm going to be talking about airborne networks and data. And uh, what we're doing is we have a, a business that we've created in Christchurch, New Zealand. We founded it there, and I'm acting as the CTO and co-founder of that company. So before I start, I want to give a little bit of background of where I've come from and uh, what I've started is in the bottom left there is an aircraft that I created when I was in high school. I was inspired by a dragonfly insect. It's an, air, it's an insect that can hover and dart sideways and backwards, and uh, I was fascinated by that and learned a lot from biomimicry of nature and mother nature, and what can I do with that in terms of an aircraft design. Uh, my father was a, an Air Force fighter pilot, and I just uh, took to aviation, and from there uh, worked at uh, Georgia Tech, where I developed aircraft such as the XB-15, which is a precursor to air taxis, and then worked on other aircraft propulsion techniques that uh, lifted up vertically and, and propelled for uh, jet engines and the like. From there, I, I kind of went underwater, and then I worked in the underwater space of developing uh, underwater autonomous uh, systems, and those were remote sensing devices that sense for different uh, aspects, and um, took that technology and it was kind of a social consciousness of what I was working on. It wasn't enough to solve for system requirements, but what was the, the end goal of what I was doing? So um, with that, I, I switched to renewable energy, and for the last decade, I've been working on different sources of renewable energy, a different leg to renewable energy, that being ocean currents, wave energy, tides, energy storage, uh, different topologies for wind energy. So I've been working with my wife, Nahal, on uh, new sources of wave energy, and then bringing in th areas that I worked in in the past uh, with the US Navy to help and develop uh, new forms of these, uh, these energy sources. So we've been using tow tanks at the, uh, the US Navy uh, to their codes and algorithms, as well as their wave tank tests and the like, um, and developing new drivetrains from superconducting to hydrostatics for larger multi-megawatt uh, wind turbines. On the bottom is what are new value propositions for uh, renewable energy? And that was, uh, I developed an underwater data center uh, with some folks. And with that was the value proposition of what could we do to combine renewable energy with data centers. Uh, some of you might be working at Bitcoin and reach transactions like two, 250 kilowatt hours, which could power a house for nine days. And if you look at overall, it's 32 terawatt hours per year, which is the size of Denmark. So, are we looking at building more efficient data centers or maybe more efficient algorithms? How do we work together in a holistic way to bring it together? And the challenge being, is there a way to do that commercially for, uh, for, for developing algorithms for that? So uh, I'll be talking about drone data as a service, uh, Skybase, uh, which I mentioned we're headquartered in uh, Christchurch. I'm glad that a lot of fellows are going there. Um, so um, it's a great town. It's come a long way, and uh, I'm really excited to be there. Uh, the topologies that we're developing for this is uh, electrical uh, vertical takeoff and landing. So this aircraft can, can lift up vertically and fly fixed wing. It has a large range. Uh, it's electrical. It can go into areas such as um, hydrogen fuel cells and the like. And the remote sensing that we're doing uh, allows for it. It's basically a magnifying glass. So I can go in and, and go in, in areas where a satellite might be 30 centimeters per pixel. We can go into two and a half centimeters per pixel. And so very detailed maps and areas for precision agriculture. I've been able to track kiwi bird or the like uh, with some of the RF signature and then help to help our first responders. And we're developing uh, networks and data to, to bring this together and then also uh, beyond line of sight. One of the reasons of being within New Zealand is that you have a, a, a regulator that you can have a collaborative approach. I can call up Paula on the phone and say, hey, I've got this problem and we can co collaborate and and figure out ways of path forward for wide area mapping and the like. So on, on the left there was Mount Taranaki where um, I was able to show an aircraft that, uh, that flies. You can see the landing of it here. Uh, it's a VTOL aircraft that has a LIDAR and so you can penetrate through the vegetation that is there. And on the right is um, where we're looking at city health monitoring. So this uh, system is able to penetrate very deeply through the vegetation, maybe to biodiversity and other things that are there. Um, as we are Moving along, the, there was a, an air we were able to do um, with this system here is work with our first responders in search and rescue. So looking at uh, depending, deploying relay aircraft and a primary aircraft in the air with a, an operating center that could be located anywhere in the world. We located a CSST, which was in central Otago, uh, which is the Center for Science and Space Technology, which is an, air, an area that's focused on uh, satellite imagery. So with that, able to 
deploy these assets and provide uh, assets to the ground and elect. So when you look at first responders, that when you lose um, 4G networks and those things, that this would allow them to communicate uh, with uh, fire and police and others to help in a disaster recovery response. So on the, on the left here is, is there were some recent fires in California and about 6,200 homes were lost. And part of it was the fact that they weren't scanning some of the power lines and looking where the vegetation was. And because of that, uh, they were sparking of the uh, power lines and ignited the fires and 40 people lost their life. So with this kind of technology, we can also look at how we can find out where that, uh, where that uh, encroachment is and use machine learning. So a lot of what we're trying to do is you can only fix what you can measure. On the right is some precision agriculture where we can do 3D mappings of farms and look at the leaching of nitrogen and where do we need to apply water or where things are under distress. So the hope is working with councils and the local EWE, giving the information to find out where and how and what we need to do to fix some of these societal endemic problems. So thank you. <laughs>